Margo, how nice to see you. Why aren't you in the theater, Addison, at the sight of your protege lending her moral support? Well, but I did. The audition, however, is over. Over? It can't be. I I've come here to read with Miss Caswell. Well, the audition was called for 2.30. It's now nearly 4. Is it really? Huh. Well, who read with Miss Caswell? Bill? Lloyd? Well, who then? Well, naturally enough, your understudy. I consider it highly unnatural to allow a girl in an advanced state of pregnancy. I, I refer to your new and unpregnant understudy, Miss Eve Harrington. Eve? My understudy? Well, didn't you know? Of course I knew. Oh, it just slipped your mind. How was Miss Caswell? Frankly, I don't remember. Just slipped your mind. <laughs> completely. Nor could anyone else tell you how Miss Caswell read, or whether Miss Caswell read or wrote a pogo stick. Was she that bad? Margot, as you know, I have lived in the theater as a Trappist monk lives in his faith. And once in a great while, I experienced that moment of revelation for which all true believers wait and pray. You were one. Miss Eve Harrington is another. I take it she read well. It wasn't a reading. It was something made of fire and music. Brilliant, vivid, unforgettable. How nice. In time, she'll be what you are. A mass of fire and music. That's me. An old kazoo and some sparklers. Uh, tell me, was uh, Bill swept away too, or were you too full of revelation to notice? Bill didn't say, but Lloyd was beside himself. He listened to his play as if someone else had written it, he said. It sounded so fresh, so new, so full of meaning. How nice for Lloyd. How nice for Eve. How nice for everyone. Oh, Eve was incredibly modest. She insisted that Lloyd felt as he did only because she read the lines exactly as he had written them. The implication being that I have not been reading them as written? To the best of my recollection, neither your name nor your performance entered the conversation. May I give you a lift somewhere? No, no thank you, Addison. Mm. I'll just run on in so they know I did come after all. <laughs> Goodbye, I must start wearing a watch. Only coffee, Eve? I'm not surprised after all that humble pie. Nothing of the kind. Karen and I had a nice talk. Including a casual reference to the part of Cora and your hopes of playing it? I discussed it very openly. She mentioned, of course, that Margot expects to play the part. <laughs> Oddly enough, she didn't say a word about Margot. You know, Eve, sometimes I think you keep things from me. I don't think that's funny. It wasn't meant to be. I confide in you and rely on you more than anyone I've ever known. To say a thing like that now, without any reason, when I need you more than ever. I hope you mean what you say, Eve. I intend to hold you to it. We have a great deal in common, it seems to me. In due time, they were wed, Margot and Bill. Also in due time, rehearsal started for the new play, starring Eve Harrington. Finally, the play was ready for its out-of-town opening in New Haven. That afternoon, I saw Eve at her hotel. Isn't it strange, Addison? I thought I'd be panic-stricken. Instead, I can't wait for tonight to come. To come and go. Are you that sure of tomorrow? Aren't you? Frankly, yes. It'll bring to me everything I've ever wanted. The end of an old road and the beginning of a new one. All paved with diamonds and gold? You know me better than that. Paved with what, then? Stars. <laughs> what time is it? Almost four. Plenty of time for a nice long nap. You could sleep, couldn't you? Why not? <laughs> the mark of a true killer. Sleep tight, rest easy, and come out fighting. Why do you call me a killer? Oh, did I say killer? I meant champion. I get my boxing terms mixed. Listen, Addison, there'll be a party here tonight. You'll come, won't you? We're having everyone up after the performance. We are? Lloyd and I. I find it odd that Karen isn't here for the opening, don't you? 
She's always been so fanatically devoted to Lloyd. Addison, just a few minutes ago, I said this would be a night to remember. I didn't mean just the theater. What else? Lloyd Richards. He's going to leave Karen. We're going to be married. So that's it. Lloyd? Still just the theater after all. <laughs> it's nothing of the kind. Lloyd loves me. I love him. I know nothing about Lloyd and his loves. I leave those to Louisa May Alcott, but I do know you. I'm in love with Lloyd. Addison, won't it be just perfect? Lloyd and I, there's no telling how far we can go. He'll write great plays for me. I'll make them great. You're the only one I've told, the only one who knows, except Lloyd and me. And Karen. She doesn't know. She knows enough not to be here. But not all of it. Not that Lloyd and I are going to be married. Well... Say something, anything. Congratulations, good work, Eve. What do you take me for? Is it possible, even conceivable, that you confuse me for that gang of backwards children you've been playing tricks on? That you have the same contempt for them that you have for me? I'm sure you mean something, Anderson, but I don't know what. Look closely, Eve. It's time you did. I am Addison DeWitt. I am nobody's fool, least of all yours. I never intended you to be. Yes, you did. You still do. I still don't know what you're getting at. You know it as well as I do, that while Lloyd may leave Karen, he will not leave Karen for you. What do you mean by that? Oh, more plainly and more distinctly, you will not have Lloyd Richards, or anyone else for that matter, because I will not permit it. Will not permit it? That sounds medieval, something out of an old melodrama. Oh, so does the history of the world for the past 20 years. Frankly, I'd hoped you would somehow have known, have taken it for granted that uh, you and I... <laughs> you and I! <laughs> remember, as long as you live, never to laugh at me, at anyone or anything else, but never me. To begin with, your name is not Eve Harrington. It's Gertrude Slezinski. Get out. It's true you worked in a brewery, a brewery in Piscataway, New Jersey. But life in the brewery was apparently not as dull as you pictured it. As a matter of fact, it got less and less dull until your boss's wife had you followed by detectives. She never proved anything. Not a thing. But the $500 you got to get out of town brought you straight to New York, didn't it? She was a liar! A liar! There was no Eddie, no pilot, and you've never been married. San Francisco has no Schubert Theater. I've never been to San Francisco. That was a stupid lie. Easy to expose. Not worthy of you. I had to get in to meet Margot. I had to say something, be somebody, make her like me. She did like you. She had and trusted you. You paid her back by trying to take Bill away. That's not true. And after you failed, you used my name and my column to blackmail Karen into getting the part of Cora. And then you lied to me about it. No, no, no! Oh, please. I had lunch with Karen not three hours ago. As always with people who want to find out things, she told me more than she learned. That I should want you at all suddenly strikes me as the height of improbability. But um, that in itself is probably the reason. You're an improbable person, Eve. So am I. We have that in common. Also a contempt for humanity, an inability to love and be loved, insatiable ambition and talent. We deserve each other. Are you listening to me? Yes, Addison. And you realize you agree how completely you belong to me. Yes, Addison. Take your nap now. And uh, good luck. For tonight. I won't go on tonight. I couldn't. Not possible. I couldn't go on. Couldn't go on? You'll give the performance of your life. Mr. DeWitt. Miss Caswell. Nice to see you again. Oh, isn't she wonderful, Mr. DeWitt? There's no one like Eve, Miss Caswell. No one in the world. Tell me, Miss Caswell. 
Do you want somebody to have a award like that of your own? More than anything else in the whole world. Then you must ask Eve Harrington how to get one. Miss Harrington knows all about it. Thank you.